Are you stuck? He was stuck. You all saw that. Okay, I see you guys getting chewed up over there as well. Alright, this is 12 out of 12. Cool. Great. Oh, the swinging arm is, is messing with the camera. That's good. Alright, I think this is the last one. Coinforge, yeah. That's the last thing that goes in the book, if I remember right. Besides the DLC things. But yeah, I might do the DLC um, campaigns. I've... I've never been particularly great about ensuring that I I play DLC. I did it for Morrowind because I love Morrowind, but I still need to go back and do the um I need to do the DLC for Castlevania, Shadow of Mordor, uh Oblivion. Yeah, those are all on my list. Finale. Okay, this one sucks. It's like it's great. But look, we have two doors here, two doors here, two doors here, and two doors there. And they all come up this way. So what we got to do is... We have to barricade off starting here i think one for you and one for you and we need to send them all the way around in a spiral a little present for you right it actually needs to start there that makes the most sense why don't we reset here I'm wearing this nice cardigan, by the way. It's very toasty. One of those gifts from grandma things. And then the mace. So if we block off here and here and here, and then here and here and here. And then you and you. Everyone who comes up from this way is forced to go all the way through here. And theoretically, we can string them all the way through here. And then through there and then through there. And then finally let them come up here. Yeah, I know that it would it would definitely the thing is it would absolutely definitely distract from actual gameplay if the dialogue was subtitled. I I can admit that, and that's a shame because like I actually like a lot of the dialogue. I love the idea of some you know jumped up swaggering braggart arguing with like wizards thousands of years older than him. I mean that's like me that's like me to a T, right? I do that in real life. But I love that he can back it up. Like, he actually has the gusto in order to be like, yes, you know what? I am willing and able to say, shut up. Because I can carry out those threats. Oh, and the bomb kobolds on this level are agonizing. Because the whole thing is predicated on these barricades working. And if the barricades don't work... Please. Please. Yeah, if the barricades don't work, then like... The... Everything that your defense is built on just disintegrates. It all falls apart. Yeah, so you let them come through here, and then... These hallways usually become your kill zones because you see how much more enclosed they are. So you can put a lot more arrow traps in here, you know, to cover like 
all this area with tar would be prohibitively expensive, un unfeasible in most cases. But in the hallways, you can do that. It's a lot easier. And you just let them all walk through the hallways. I just needed to make sure that this would be where they are. But yeah, so you let them all come on through here, all the way through. Until eventually you get to here, and then this is a good place for your kill zones to be. Because every orc up until this point has walked through there. Every orc besides the ones from the west hallway, that is. But you can see that every single orc has to walk from north to east to south to west, and then east to south, and then south. All of them have to go all the way to west. Which means that putting the traps in here will hit 75% of the orcs as long as the barricades hold. And even if you don't have traps set up, you will still permit... You will still get them. Hopefully, at least. Thank you for walking at me in single file, fellas. Did I just shoot that out of the air? No, I don't think I did. Maybe I'm just imagining. And then we won't barricade up all of these, but we will barricade up some of them. And we'll put some there. Just to string them through, just to waste as much of their time, waste their time 2023, just to waste as much time of theirs as possible. Yeah, and you see that, like, when they're coming from the east hallway. Sometimes it's a little scary because, like, they get like, like, look at how close they are. They get real close. Yeah, they get really close right up in there. For real. <sighs> Let's try to ensure that we have, um... Somebody shooting at kobolds. North and south is covered. West is covered. This will be good. South. One of each, huh? Great. Good thing I brought two. The coins will be useful. So I want to try to get in there and do as much damage as I can as fast as I can. God, I wish there were more tower defense games that were also shooters. They're all pretty fun. Damn it, guys, really? Maybe I can get around here and get down here, dance, and draw their fire. Oh, God. Good to remember you're not bulletproof, though. You're not 50 cent. Or fitty, if you prefer. Sorry. May I call you Mr. Cent? Okay. Next. Who's coming up?
Knolls. I hate Knolls. Coming from the north. Did that just... For God... See, this is what I mean. I gotta pay money to clog this hole again. See, look at this. There's only so much that I can do. Look at this mess. I like this one. This won't hurt a bit. Ugh. I'm so clever. That's agonizing, man. I hate the kobolds, dude. I've I don't think that my I don't think this is gonna work at all now. Like, granted, this is partially my fault for having it be... Th this is why I hated using barricades as a kid. I, I, I am certain I've said this already, but this is a big reason as to why I really did not enjoy using barricades as a kid. Because the nature of barricades is that they're temporary. Like, the fact that they can be broken makes them less appealing to use. In, like, every instance. Because, like, if a, um... If an archer dies, then they'll come back because the corpse will persist. Yeah, if an archer dies, they come back because the corpse persists. But like... Oh, that's so not the case with barricades. It's so annoying to have to try to replenish barricades. Like they're already so expensive. This is one thing about Sanctum. In Sanctum, you know, it's a lot hard. It's a lot easier because barricades are the cheapest block. Granted, it's because Sanctum has its own weird control scheme stuff going on. But in the case of um, Sanctum, you know, barricade is the cheapest kind of block, and they're indestructible. Now, I do think that Sanctum is a lot easier than orcs must die where am I north side who's in here isn't there supposed to be barricades there guys great And see, imagine if I didn't put all those money into barricades. Imagine how much more stuff I would have. But the problem is that, like, when you do that, so much stuff just comes in. Done and done. Look, look, right now I have the money for 10 barricades, but think about how many barricades I have already put down. The thing is that it is fun to play with barricades. Like, I, I love bottlenecking them and just getting them all to get shredded when they're up here. It's just so difficult to, like, control them. This is, this is the thing, though, right? Like, often there are times when you're playing a game and you play the game as you enjoy it, but that's not optimal. And so you kind of either just have to deal or you have to just, like, maybe you just have to deal is all. But that's kind of unfortunate, you know? Because you want to be able to play the way that you want to play in any game. And, like, I love spamming guardians everywhere just because I enjoy it. 
this game would actually feel kind of lonely if not for uh, the Guardians, you know? You know, you want to get your big, cool Helm's Deep moment. And, like, this game has a lot. But Helm's Deep is not just, you know, Legolas running around shooting at guys. Or Gimli and Aragorn, you know, going in. You know, if you want to get your co-op on. Like in the sequel. Still haven't lost anyone, though. So that's good, at least. But, yeah, like, Helm's Deep is not just a bunch of guy uh, just one guy you know going nuts on a bunch of orcs you know it's a complement of archers of men and elves is that supposed to be there don't remember if that's supposed to be there. Did I? Yes, I did put that gap there on purpose. So wait. There's another gap somewhere else. It's these. Right. See, putting a swinging mace here would actually be cheaper... than putting a bunch of barricades. Problem is that it's just not a guarantee to... God! <laughs> Damn it! I saw a bunch of fast guys, and I was like, hmm. Help me, archers. Shoot at them. Uh, maybe this is the right way to do it, you know? Just why bother? Why bother with subtlety or defense? Just smash. That's what my wife would say. She has a, a real affinity for playing orcs and barbarians and dwarves and uh, that general sort of thing. Where even are they? They're over here. That's weird. They're all coming in from the right door relative to their position. Wait, how's an archer down? Just being shot at by the crossbow orcs? Indeed! position where I can't shoot at him proper and they can't either let me just double check my camera okay great I'm still only a one monitor kind of guy I kind of want to get a second monitor first before I get a real PC because then I can just use my real my what would be my second monitor for my lappy on my PC when I get a you know a proper desktop Oh, there's more of you. Aw, oh, poor thing got confused. Yeah, wow. I guess it might just straight up be more va like viable to have... Like a bunch of swinging maces. And then to just do it like the cover of Doom. You know, when you're on top of a hill and there's just a million guys all running up on you? Hey, you're frozen. That's not fair. Come on. That's a straight-up bug. Those game features are not meant to work in that, in that manner. Okay, that does add a dot. You're a problem.
I see more. Okay, anyone else? The Maces actually did a really good job just chewing through them. Hey! Alright! I'm going to adjust the volume of this. Every war mage in the Order knew, of course. To stop the Horde forever, the rifts must be closed. It's a simple thing. Step back through and seal all the rifts behind him with a gesture and a thought. A spell even the most dim-witted of us could manage. When the rifts close, the magic dies. Of course, that means no more mind-controlled orcs and ogres. But it also means no more fortresses strengthened by magic. No more summoned rain clouds when the droughts come. No more village spells to help heal the sick. Without magic, the world beyond the rift changes. But our world changes too, and not necessarily for the better. It took courage to make that choice. Courage that only one member of the Order had in the end. Either courage, or a particular brand of stubborn stupidity. Alright, yeah. Spoilers, but yeah, he did in fact, uh... Drop every rift. <clears throat> Yeah, that's orcs, that's orcs Must Die, everyone. It still has a really, really solid gameplay loop. Like, just third-person shooter and tower defense. That's really fun. It's simple, but it's easy. It's a lot of fun as a result. Um, it doesn't take a lot to understand it. It's pretty simple to know, to f just feel. Um, and as a result, it's a really, really fun game. And it doesn't take a lot of, like, learning. There's a few things where, like, you kind of need to get the gist. Uh, and it'll severely ha hamper your enjoyment if you don't. But you can learn them, you know? And it's something where you can easily pick it up with, like, a, you know, a, a five-minute read on the Steam forums. But, yeah. The sequel's kind of weird because it's like, anyway, so, yeah, we destroyed all magic and no magic will ever exist after this. Ever. Forever. And then the sequel starts and it's like, hey, it turns out we found a little, there's a little bit more magic in the back there. We just found a little bit, just a little bit more. Um, so yeah, there is still magic. Don't worry about it. I know that we said that there was no more magic, but as it happens, there is just a little more magic. Um, <laughs> uh, which is a little silly, but they kind of needed to make the sequel because the sequel is like everything that the base game should have been. You know, it's it's one of those things where the, the first game came out and it was almost a demo that they just happened to sell. And it's like, it's cool. It has some good ideas, but the sequel has some real ideas for it. You know, like it has co-op. It has like double the traps. It has so many more levels. It has more elements of gameplay. It has character development. But this game still does have a pretty shall I say, respectable um, story and character development. For what it is, it's still very simple, but like it just, it comes in, sets up, says, hey, we're doing this. This is how it works. And it's so solid the whole way through. And like, it's kind of a shame what happened to this because like the game was good. The sequel was, a you know, so much better. They're both so good that you can just play them today. Like we're now 10 years hence and these games still are pretty awesome. But then, you know, they were like, let's make a MOBA instead. And that's kind of weird. That was a, I feel like that was a real misstep. Like, I know that it expanded the universe, but like, the people who play MOBAs are kind of way different than the people who play any other game, any other franchise. And then with the actual third game being a, a, a Stadia exclusive, like, you may as well have put on the Ouya. And it's not now, but the thing is, is that like now the hype has passed because everyone getting hyped and being like, oh my God, Borderlands 3 is coming out. Oh, it's only coming out on this. Oh, Borderlands 3 did stuff that I, a Borderlands fan, don't like. Mm. And then, you know, Borderlands 3 
comes out on everything else and people are like nah, i already heard that uh people who uh liked it uh were of two minds about it or people didn't like it or you know i i heard about it you know and with with the thing of like orcs must die on stadia like i feel like it kind of really hampered itself and it didn't sell as well as it could have because it was on stadia um but yeah i would probably be excited for an orcs must die 4 especially if they really brought everything together but the thing is is that like orcs must die 2 just kept adding more maps to itself um and these games don't really have a, a big story to justify adding more elements like that so it could just be that they continue to add stuff to omd3 and that would probably be fine um but it's just uh you know it's it's a good franchise to be sure but it has had like half of its games have some sort of massive misstep and then when like you look at this game omd1 compared to omd2 like this game doesn't look as good compared to omd2 and that's a shame because like this game is a lot of fun but like it's not the second one and the second one's really solid and then when you look at the other two games in the series it's like well you know you kind of just feel like everyone's just here for omd2 and in some cases they are you know it's a big overshadowing but you know if you're if your one game that you made is so good that it overshadows everything else then maybe you can be proud of the one game that you made that's really really good <laughs> um but if not you know you can have it be an example of what you should try to make again something as good as that um but at the very least you know i'm happy to have played the first one i don't know if i'll come back to play all the extra maps because like i know i didn't delve into the story at all but there's even less story in those uh and i might come back for the sequel but the thing is that the sequel is like so built for co-op that like i mean it has co-op you should be playing in co-op right you want to be able to play with your friends that's not the case in every game so in the games where that is the case you want to take advantage of it right but you know you never know. Never know what the future holds. But yeah, I hope you had a good time. I had a good time playing it. It's a good game to go back to. Um, but I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. This is Orcs Must Die 1. It is available on Steam for <clears throat> the pittance of $10. Yeah. And you can get every game in the series for $40. Or no, sorry. OMD3 is 30 bucks. And then OMD2 is 14 bucks. Yeah. But there is a package deal if you want to get all three. They are still all really good. So I might recommend it. Um, There's a lot of openness to the games. I know that I was kind of very heavy on just like just kick them all into the to kick them all into acid with a wind belt or flip them into acid with a flip trap or um bottleneck them with barricades and tar but like you can play this game without tar you know you can there's a lot of freedom here there is a lot of freedom you can do it however you like um and it's pretty cool for that reason but yeah i would recommend this game if you saw this and you're like not for me then i hope you enjoyed my playthrough or commentary at least um and if nothing else robot the the devs here they're called robot entertainment i think robot entertainment yeah robot entertainment you kind of knocked it out of the park this game was really really solid so thank you for making it um but i'll see you guys next time i've been alfred this has been orcs must die we're done with it i finished another lp Woo. um but i'll see you guys next time so have a good day bye